I think for lots of people, the single hardest thing that we will ever do is admit that not only were we wrong, but we've been wrong for a long time. Hey there, folks. It has been a while since I've talked about toxic fandom in a broad sense. I've done a couple of videos previously. I'll link the more recent one up there because I'll kind of refer to that at least a little bit in the lead up to this. Um, And I've had this on my mind for a little bit, and I kind of want to dive into it because the most recent one I did was talking about how a lot of what seems to drive uh, toxic fandom behavior and interactions stems from this idea that based off your opinion on a piece of media, people will make all sorts of assumptions about your beliefs. And so an opinion becomes an agenda. So suddenly liking something or disliking something else puts you into certain boxes of a a particularly charged and often politicized spectrum when all you did was say, oh, I kind of like this or I kind of don't like that. I want to dig a layer deeper underneath that and sort of examine what I think personally is one of the reasons why the assumption gets built that a certain opinion corresponds with a belief and or an agenda. Now, there are other reasons why this happens, but I do think that one of the big reasons and one of the big issues underscoring a lot of toxic fan behavior, particularly towards other fans, is ego defense. I don't know how much that gets talked about in general. I mean, people talk about things like white fragility, um, fragile masculinity, and this is, I guess, in the same neighborhood. But the thing is, regardless of whether you are male or white or whatever, the vast majority of us have base assumptions about ourselves that we assume in order to operate and function and move forward. And core to those assumptions is usually a fundamental belief that what we think is most likely correct. Now, this kind of gets solidified more and more and more as you grow older. Because when you're a bit younger and when you're still learning a lot of things for the first time, hopefully, ideally, you're a bit more open to the possibility of, oh, okay, so this thing that I'd assumed, well, that's not right. Let's let's, uh, adapt the new information, come up with something new. I think a lot of us hit uh, a point, and it's not a hard line. I think it's a gradation in our lives where we kind of want to stop changing and we kind of want to just be able to assume that what we know and believe is already correct. It's sort of the opposite of actual rational thought process because a rational thought process is I will take in the information available and then based off that information, I will either come to affirm or adjust my conclusion. Whereas everything I'm going to talk about is kind of coming from a base assumption of I assume I'm already right. But there's a reason for that assumption, which is we tie a lot of ourselves up in the things that we both believe and that we do. So how does this manifest, this idea of defending one's ego? How does that help escalate what might just be a dispute of opinion into something harsher, more toxic? Well... If you start from a position of, I like this geeky property because of X, and somebody else says, oh, I like this too, but I like, I like Y about it. I don't like X so much. Now, on the surface, that should be able to just be, oh, well, we like different things about it. Well, that's fine. But there's questions that go on in the background of a lot of our heads 
that we may not even realize are going on consciously. Questions like, if other people like this thing that I like for reasons other than why I like it, does it mean that I'm right about what's good about this thing? What if the things that they say they like about it are specifically things that I don't like? Does that mean that they're right about a property and I'm wrong? Well, if we come to that, back to what I said before about most of us operating on a base assumption of assuming we're already right, then what's the natural conclusion so that we don't have to challenge that assumption? Those are fake fans or those are people trying to twist something I love into something else and not what it truly is because I like it for the right reasons and they like it for the wrong reasons. If you, and I don't recommend doing this, but if you venture into some of the more hate-fueled areas of fandom, of any fandom, then you're going to very quickly start to find incredibly conspiratorial narratives where it's not just a matter of there are fans that are being catered to that are turning this in a, that are turning this property in a direction we don't like but it becomes they are intentionally ruining this thing for us it's not just a matter of they also like it but for different reasons no 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 this is part of an agenda so there we are coming back to this thing of opinions are also agendas because if they legitimately engage with this thing the way that I do and they came to a different conclusion about what was good about it, well, that might mean that I have to examine my ideas. I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm just going to go, well, what they say they like, they're lying or they don't understand it or as it gets more twisted, they are coming in to take this away from me. Because if you adopt the idea that these other people are not actually fans of a thing, but are trying to ruin it, well, for many fans, that will justify harsh responses. Not just of trying to expel them from your immediate fan circle, but seeking them out. Stopping the agenda that you've ascribed to them. And this leads to the kind of behavior of people going and leaving harsh or argumentative or abusive comments on months or years old videos and old comments. I have to clean this kind of stuff up all the time. And I block anyone who does it. It doesn't even matter what your opinion is. If you are coming into my comments and leaving argumentative comments on video on comments on a video from a year or more ago you are just a shit stirrer you are here to start fights and you want to start fights because if you get the other side riled up that will justify more harsh action from you the ultimate end point of this and the reason that it gets clung to harder and harder every step along the way of getting harsher in your response, in your reaction to someone just disagreeing with you about a thing you like, is that in the end, you need the other people to be the asshole. And you'll construct insane conspiratorial narratives to make them the asshole because if they aren't, then you definitely are. When it escalates to a point of you actively attacking people who don't share your opinion, you have to paint them as bad as possible because otherwise you are the bad guy. And nobody wants to be the bad guy. Even people who are all, oh, I don't care about your feelings. I don't care what you think of me. They still want to think that they're the good guy. And um, if you've been thinking about what I've been saying, uh, yeah, this applies to more than fandom. The conspiratorial narratives of things like Gamergate, of TERFs. I had a very bizarre accusation hurled at me in a comment 
on a video I put up on my Vera Wild channel, uh, where I talk more specifically and openly about my experiences as a gender fluid person. And it was a video in which I got a little bit vulnerable and talked about something that had kind of shaken me in experience. And there was this commenter going through and every comment where someone said, oh, I can see that this was hard for you to talk about. This person was commenting, don't believe don't believe them. They're a liar. They're a trained actor. I am not a trained actor. I'm a failed actor. I did try and make it acting, but I have I have more of a claim to being a trained mathematician than a trained actor in terms of the amount of schooling I actually got on the subject. And it's a not completely illogical leap from the fact that you can look at my IMDb and see that I took a crack at acting to then claim that I am a trained actor. And if I'm a trained actor, then you can't believe any vulnerability I show in a video because I could fake it. Ignoring the fact that even being a trained actor does not make you incapable of expressing genuine vulnerability. You don't lose that. But even setting that aside... The reason someone would jump onto that is because it fits their conspiratorial narrative. They went into my comment section having already decided that I'm a liar and that anything I say that feels like vulnerability is attempting to get sympathy to get people to my side of some political issue as opposed to just sharing a personal experience. And whatever narrative will fit that they'll integrate it in and it becomes more twisted and more conspiratorial and it's the same mentality that gets people saying that any woman who has had success in the video game industry got it by sleeping with people it's the same mentality as QAnon who claim to believe that anyone of a liberal mindset is literally a demon-worshipping baby killer. Because they've already taken it, their part in this debate, to such a level that that's what the other side would have to be in order for them to not be the bad guy. See, people look at what organizations and movements like QAnon claim to actually believe and go, They can't really think this. And I'm not sure they do on an intellectual level. But it's what they need to be true. And when it comes to TERFs, the narrative that trans women, which I'm not, by the way, but they don't care. The narrative that trans women aren't just existing in a space with them, but are predators and anyone who is a trans advocate is actively attempting to attack and undermine women and women's freedom and women's spaces and to make it more dangerous for them to live, they need that to be true to justify the actions they are taking to try and clamp down on the rights of trans people. And just like how in fandoms you get accusations that there is a agenda being pushed, people coming in to destroy a piece of geekdom that they like, and why it isn't okay to simply enjoy the thing you enjoy, but you have to go out and attack anything that is in opposition to the thing you enjoy. And I've always said that these elements of toxic fandom have always been there, because they have. But the age we live in accelerates things. Now, If you see somebody else exhibiting this behavior, trying to pull them out is going to be very difficult. Because as I said, a lot of this spawns from a need to defend one's self, one's understanding of oneself as the good guy. So anyone who's telling you that you aren't, you're going to fight against that because it's not a, a notion that you're going to want to deal with. So I think the best thing that we can do is try and keep an eye on ourselves And how we are engaging with other fans of a work, especially 
fans who we disagree with. Because we should be able to say, I also like Doctor Who and I like the Chibnall era. Or be able to say, I also like Doctor Who, but I do not like the Chibnall era. And not have this side accusing this one of pushing a political correctness agenda and a deliberate attempt to undermine the show and turn it into the opposite of what it used to be. And without this side accusing this side of being misogynist bigots who absolutely loathe anything with a woman at the front of it. It's a show. You can disagree about a show. And if you feel the need to paint the other side of a disagreement with the worst possible brush, try to pause and ask yourself, why am I doing that? Why do I need them to be that bad? What am I trying to justify by making them worse? What behavior am I excusing in myself by making them look like monsters. And that is why I will always come back to this quote from Big Finish, The Holy Terror, it's the sixth Doctor story. It does not matter to whom the cruelty is directed, the cruelty itself is wrong. As fans, as human beings, it's very easy to excuse mistreating someone by simply categorizing them as lesser, as not being worthy of respect or dignity. But they are. And if you're acting towards them in a way that needs them to not be worthy of dignity, ask yourself why. And if the reason you need them to be the bad guy is actually worth it, Because at the very least, when it comes to fan arguments, I would say it it almost never is. But try and keep track of yourself. I try and keep track of myself. Can't say I'm perfect. Nobody is. But I do my best. And I hope you will too. Thanks so much for hearing me out on this. It's been on my mind for a little while and... Yeah, for various reasons, certain things keep cropping up in fan of spaces or my comments or whatever that uh, put it back in my head. Can't imagine why. But uh, in any case, you take care. And whatever your thoughts are on what I've said here, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Like, share, subscribe, all help me out. I have a Patreon, which is what actually pays my bills. And any help there is of great assistance, but no pressure. At the end of the day, what I really want you to remember is that you are beautiful, you are valid, and you are loved. You are the council. I am just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. This video wouldn't have been possible without the support of my patrons, and I want to give special thanks to Jared Boyce, MJ, The Doctor, Tracy Scrabbit, Vincent Paul Bartolucci, Kaylin Schwartz, Edelon, Robin Moore, Ross Schultz, and Shayla Gorley. Thanks so much.